Chad, soit au Tabat, à Luanda, au South Africa, à Bichaya, au Delhi, au Brésil, à Paris, ou même jamais là. C'est quoi le Canada, c'est quoi le Papa? Mando qui m'a solé la nati kapa To vende nazi Mando qui m'a le limba ndaka Gombe sali kongo Manye me sali kongo Mbanda ke sali kongo yesu To sengi ki mi ana kongo Let me 
confirm what you said, and maybe amplify a little bit. Uh, as you rightly point out, the, the Brits um, have been giving uh, basically um, uh, direct budget support, and whereas our programs are generally projectized, and, and that means our assistance is going into specific programs delivering health services, education services, or even working with private sector and other organizations uh, in, in the case of agriculture. So we, we absolutely do not want to punish the people of Rwanda, and we believe that we've built in safeguards in our development assistance program. Uh, John, the one thing is why haven't you added any? Hello? I, hello, I stepped. Hello? Looks like we lost them. I think we can go on to the next question. Okay. Our next question comes from Daryl Finley with Enough Project. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you so much, Ambassador Carson, for all that you've done in the administration. I mean, I know this isn't an easy time, and we all understand that. So my question is, what kind of role slash support will the USG play slash provide to support a political process besides communicating to the same cast of characters? who've been engaged at varying levels in the instability in the East to ensure, and in Congo generally, but to ensure that there's a transparent and credible peace process that's inclusive of civil society leaders and women and other key uh, multi-stakeholder players that are necessary to really curbing, as you said, um, breaking the cycle of violence. John, go ahead. This one's for you. Okay, okay. Daryl, thank you very much. Uh, one, uh, Secretary Clinton does have a special uh, envoy uh, and advisor for the Great Lakes. It's Ambassador Barry Walkley. Uh, Ambassador Walkley uh, travels uh, to the region quite uh, frequently, meets with senior government officials uh, in Kinshasa, uh, Kigali, and also uh, in, uh, in uh, Kampala. Uh, he participates uh, in uh, as an observer in, uh, in uh, the International uh, uh, Conference of the Great Lakes uh, meetings. He participates as a member of the contact group uh, 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 on this issue. Uh, and uh, we hope uh, that he uh, will continue to be uh, a source of information, advice, and recommendations uh, on uh, what uh, is done in finding a solution. Equally, uh, oh, there have been now uh, two meetings uh, of uh, the M23 and uh, members of the delegation from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Those meetings have occurred uh, in uh, Kampala, and we have had uh, an embassy uh, officer uh, at the public sessions uh, of those uh, meetings and also uh, in the corridors uh, when uh, those meetings have uh, broken up. We hope to, to be able not only to uh, listen uh, and observe, but also to help uh, influence and guide uh, and recommend uh, outcomes uh, that are there. We are prepared uh, to do more uh, as the parties uh, permit us to do uh, in uh, trying to uh, help uh, shape uh, a uh, uh, a process uh, that will be far more durable and sustainable than the processes that we have seen uh, in the past. Part of this uh, is building confidence and trust uh, between the leaders and the countries, something that has been in very, very short supply. Uh, and we think uh, it is also necessary to make sure that any uh, agreements that are made and signed. Um, first, what steps is the administration taking to actually support some of these Start local grassroots efforts at peace building? And then secondly, okay. um, I think Jeffrey, you had mentioned some of the, the work that you're doing through the Security Council in terms of leading an international humanitarian response to the crisis. I wonder if you can provide more details about that. Um, and also some of the maybe creative um, ideas you had in terms of the mandate and resources of one of those actions that are the protection of civilians. Thank you. Johnny, do you want first bite at the apple, and then Earl, you may have some additions, and Jeff, you could add just yeah. a little bit more on what we're talking about. Go on. Uh, Grant, I'm going I'm to uh, punt and let uh, Earl, if he uh, wants to talk about what uh, USAID 
uh, is uh, doing uh, in the East to uh, support uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the grassroots movements out there. Uh, if he uh, doesn't have any comments, then I'll come back and, and add some more. But I think uh, this may be a little bit more for AID. Great. Uh, absolutely. And, and I would like to start off by saying that we work in partnership with uh, a number of UN agencies uh, in Eastern Congo and doing precisely that. And, and that is helping communities um, build peace through reconciliation and also trying to address some of the underlying issues relating to conflict in, in their communities and with neighboring communities. And what, what we've seen over the years is actually a lot of the conflict um, revolves around land issues and, and other resource issues. Um, we, we are working with UN Habitat, we work with UNICEF, and we work with uh, some of the international NGOs such as CARE, where they are doing this community-based peace-building process. And it, again, is trying to not only, not only help resolve the underlying conflict, but also to give something to the communities to, that they can share to include community-level infrastructure, such as schools and roads and, and other things. Yes, sure. Yeah, no, just uh, thanks for the question. I think some of the some of the um, options on the table um, uh, would include uh, doing things like uh, raising the, the, the number of uh, troops to the authorized uh, ceiling of MINUSCO or reconfiguring part of the force uh, to perform a more um, offensive role. Uh, uh, there may be some other um, uh, uh, some other possibilities out there. Again, it, the, the idea is to sort of harmonize uh, uh, MINUSCO and, and the uh, uh, neutral international force um, idea. Um, uh, these are these are complex issues. Um, because, for example, if one were to um, uh, make uh, the, the neutral international uh, force as, as part of MINUSCO, um, then uh, you have to make sure that civilians will be able to distinguish which elements are doing uh, uh, which part of the mandate and so forth. So those are some of the things um, on the table. There will, there will be some uh, some others, but, but I would characterize it as a as a rethink um, uh, of the mission um, um, to, to, to ensure that it's, it's, um, it's being as effective as it can. Our next question comes from the line of Monique Beadle with Falling Whistles. Please go ahead. I have a question, two questions. The first is, um, Ambassador Carson, you said you stated yesterday in the hearing your support for the idea of a UN or AU envoy, um, can you let us know where that process uh, stands right now? And um, also sort of a reflection and a question. I think what has disappointed uh, many of us who work on the advocacy side of things is that we've seen basically 15 to 16 years of, of essentially the same policy coming from the United States. And I think what the M23 conflict is making clear is that the policy is not working. And I've heard articulated, um, you know, a lot of ideas and solutions which frankly feel a little bit tired. I do appreciate, Ambassador Carson, that you have finally uh, stated who the external support is coming from, but it still feels a bit like where there's not a dramatic departure from the policy of the last 15 to 16 years. So I, I guess my question is, is what exactly are, is the U.S. doing differently this time around that it, it hasn't been doing for the last 15 to 16 years? Uh, thank you very mu much, uh, Grant. I'll take uh, start off, sure. and, and uh, thanks, Monique, uh, very much for uh, your your comments. Uh, first of all, uh, as I said in my uh, testimony yesterday, uh, the administration uh, supports uh, the idea of uh, Secretary General Ban Ki Moon uh, uh, appointing a very high level. Uh, senior and experienced uh, UN uh, envoy to uh, take uh, some day-to-day -day, uh, responsibilities uh, for trying to promote and bring peace to the region. Uh, I might add uh, that if indeed uh, this uh, occurs, uh, 
uh, it would be something that uh, is entirely different from what we have been doing uh, in the last uh, 15 years. So uh, that is uh, both a recommendation, but it's also something uh, that would be new. Uh, I would add that the African Union uh, has recently, within the last uh, two months, uh, appointed a uh, high-level uh, African diplomat from Mali to serve as the uh, AU's uh, representative. And as before, we do have uh, at the State Department uh, a senior uh, envoy of Ambassador Barry Lockley. Uh, we think all of these things are uh, important. Uh, their presence helps to focus uh, attention on the problem uh, both in the field uh, but also uh, in their respective agencies and, and, uh, and capitals. So it's important. Uh, we um, uh, recognize that uh, over uh, the last, uh, not just 15 years, but over the uh, last uh, uh, 17 or 18 years, as I indicated in my testimony yesterday, uh, that uh, the Eastern DRC uh, and the Great Lakes region uh, has been uh, in turmoil. Uh, we have watched uh, uh, over uh, the period since the uh, fall of the Mobutu government in 1996-97, uh, uh, a situation where an estimated uh, 5 million people have been uh, killed. Uh, and millions uh, uh, have been uh, displaced or made uh, refugees, and where we have seen uh, both uh, a series of uh, atrocities uh, and human rights violations uh, and humanitarian uh, disasters. I think uh, we've also seen the, the presence of a large uh, number of uh, UN peacekeepers uh, in the uh, area. Uh, we have been trying. Uh, we have been uh, trying to uh, uh, adopt uh, different uh, measures and uh, different uh, uh, solutions to uh, the problem. One thing uh, that uh, has remained constant uh, throughout uh, most of this uh, is that the uh, regional leaders have also remained uh, the same. Uh, it's been President uh, Museveni in Uganda. Uh, it's been uh, President uh, Kagame uh, in Kigali. Uh, and it's been mostly uh, uh, since uh, the death of uh, the, Joseph Kabila's father, uh, uh, the younger President Kabila. Uh, we uh, have been attempting uh, to do uh, uh, what is sometimes uh, nearly impossible for outsiders to do, uh, and that is to uh, bring peace uh, to leaders uh, and countries who are deeply, deeply distrustful uh, of one another, uh, who lack uh, confidence uh, in uh, the word and the integrity uh, of the person they sit across the, the table from, uh, who see uh, their uh, security uh, interests uh, defined uh, very, very um, uh, narrowly uh, and who are willing to uh, do almost anything uh, to protect uh, their uh, sovereign national uh, interests. Uh, it's less uh, our uh, ability to uh, bring a solution to this than it is uh, the uh, difficult uh, uh, effort to get uh, leaders who are uh, distrustful of one another to think differently about why they need to work uh, together. But I think what you do see now is uh, a really strong uh, commitment uh, to uh, elevate uh, the significance uh, of the problem in the eastern Congo uh, to the same level uh, that we have uh, in trying to resolve uh, problems uh, in places like Somalia uh, and uh, Sudan. Uh, uh, I went out uh, to the, the, the region uh, a week and a half ago, and for the very first time, uh, there was uh, three senior uh, Africa directors from the U.S., uh, France, uh, uh, and uh, the U. 
okay carrying uh, a common message of great concern and a need for these leaders uh, to take uh, common actions and common approaches. Uh, I think uh, we have also seen uh, for the first, first time in our various different ways us being willing uh, to point fingers, uh, to uh, impose uh, sanctions, uh, and to have uh, a common set of, uh, of, of, of policies uh, that we're willing to uh, pursue. I think it is no longer uh, things as they uh, have been. I think we will continue to uh, press uh, very, very uh, hard uh, to get these leaders uh, to meet on a regular basis, to resolve their uh, problems, uh, to uh, commit to not supporting uh, the rebel groups uh, from their countries across their uh, borders and recognize that uh, the uh, economic security uh, of their own uh, countries, their potential for greater economic growth is dependent upon the security uh, and the uh, prosperity of their, of their neighbors. Uh, so we are uh, you know, taking greater interest, uh, and uh, we're looking for uh, solutions to the current problems. As I said in my testimony uh, yesterday before the, uh, the, the, the House Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, that it is really time, it is really, really time to break the, the recurring cycle of uh, violence uh, that has plagued that uh, region. Uh, and uh, to end the uh, impunity, to get governments to stop supporting rebel groups uh, across uh, their borders and to recognize uh, that uh, their peace and prosperity depends on the peace and prosperity of their neighbors. Uh, trust and confidence has to be rebuilt. Uh, it is something in very, very short supply in the region. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, good evening, gentlemen. Um, my question has to do with the, the Africa Union one, and it seems to me that uh, our allies are close to us, and I think that you mentioned another one. Uh, I have seen the sense that you see the African Union as a similar ally, uh, and if so, uh, could you uh, spell that out? I'm also uh, wondering how much of the resource curse is driving this conflict. Um, I'm hearing cocaine, I'm hearing oil and gas, minerals and diamonds and so forth. And then the third part is, what about the diaspora? How have you engaged the diaspora in this discussion, or this uh, the initial entree with the diaspora? Melvin, mm -hmm. well, I'll, I'll turn this to Johnny and, and Earl and others may want to jump in. With respect to the African Union, this has been an, an issue that we raised, which I suspect Johnny will talk more about in the recent uh, visit of Chairwoman. Philomene Zuma, and that was an issue that we discussed with her here at the White House, and I also know was an issue in detail discussed um, between uh, her and the Secretary of State and in more detailed discussions with her team over at State. They're certainly an important partner. They're one with whom we're in constant contact, both about the DRC and also about the whole array of shared agenda items and challenges across the continent. Johnny, you may want to add more on that as well as the resource course which you spoke to yesterday on, on the Hill and, and Earl, then you may as well. Uh, Grant, uh, I think you uh, covered the first part of uh, uh, Mel's question uh, very well. I'll only uh, underscore two things. Uh, one, uh, we believe that the uh, African Union uh, is an important partner uh, for the United States uh, in resolving uh, any uh, major uh, conflict uh, in Africa. Uh, we uh, have tried uh, deliberately uh, to strengthen our relationship uh, with the uh, AU uh, throughout the uh, Obama administration. Uh, and as Grant pointed out, uh, discussions uh, about the situation in the Great Lakes and the Eastern Congo figured prominently uh, in the discussions that Secretary uh, Clinton had uh, with uh, uh, the chairwoman of the AU, uh, Dr. Lomini Zuma, uh, two and a half weeks ago uh, when uh, she uh, was here. We will continue to work with them to their serious and important partner. 
uh, second. Uh, Mel, uh, there is no uh, doubt in my mind uh, that conflict uh, minerals uh, help to uh, fuel uh, and sustain the violence uh, that occurs uh, across uh, the uh, Great Lakes. Uh, we hope that things like the implementation of the Dodd-Frank uh, legislation uh, will help uh, to uh, end uh, some of the uh, illegal uh, movement of minerals uh, out of the uh, region uh, and uh, will uh, put in uh, normal and established uh, trading patterns that will help uh, promote uh, and develop the economies uh, of the DRC and others. But let me say, with this current crisis, uh, it is not <coughs> driven uh, by uh, minerals uh, at all. Uh, this current crisis in which we see the uh, M23 uh, rebelling against the, uh, the FARDIC uh, and the government of, the, of, of Rwanda uh, is driven by uh, other uh, issues. Uh, the other issues are uh, President Kabila's uh, pronounced uh, decision uh, in March that he was going to arrest uh, Bosco and Taganda uh, and uh, bring him to justice for uh, atrocities and human rights violations. Uh, it is a result of the refusal uh, of units uh, within uh, the uh, uh, FARDIC uh, comprised of M23 rebels to be moved uh, from their uh, home districts uh, in the eastern uh, part of the DRC to other parts uh, of the country. Uh, it was uh, about uh, the refusal of officers uh, in the uh, now M23 rebellion uh, not wanting to take up new assignments uh, across the country in the western part uh, of the country, uh, of the DRC. Uh, these individuals uh, were uh, acting like they were a territorial uh, home guard, like they were a part of a national guard, like they were part of a regional force, and they were unwilling uh, to subordinate themselves to uh, general orders uh, from uh, Kinshasa. Uh, they weren't acting like a national uh, army, uh, but a, uh, a army uh, of the eastern Kivus. Uh, and Bosco uh, Antigonda was uh, not acting like a general uh, in uh, the uh, Fartic, but a pro-council uh, uh, in, the, in the area. So uh, it, it, it's about uh, the desire of these military officers and troops to shield themselves. It's about their uh, effort to be above orders and justice. Uh, it's about them protecting, continuing to, to harbor and protect uh, individuals who have carried out serious human rights uh, violations. No doubt minerals uh, come into this, uh, but uh, the current uh, crisis is not about minerals uh, and uh, illegal things that it may help to sustain some of this. Uh, this is uh, about uh, uh, the refusal of rebel troops uh, to uh, subordinate themselves to national command, uh, and it's about them protecting individuals who violated uh, human rights. So that's what it's about. The diaspora, uh, we uh, do try to keep uh, tabs on the diaspora, but I'll be very, very frank. Uh, the diaspora uh, is as deeply uh, divided on this uh, issue uh, as, uh, as the uh, states uh, in the region. Uh, when uh, I left uh, the hearing uh, yesterday, uh, I was accosted uh, by uh, half a dozen uh, different people. Uh, a number of people shouted at me and said, uh, why are you uh, condemning uh, President uh, Mugabe? Uh, he's done so much for Rwanda and regional uh, peace. Uh, said, uh, why haven't you uh, condemned him and sanctioned him personally for his uh, activities? Some uh, Congolese uh, said to me uh, that uh, President Kabila uh, should be uh, arrested. Other Congolese uh, said to me, uh, you didn't speak up uh, for Kabila uh, enough. Uh, the diaspora, uh, as the word suggests, uh, has many voices and in conflict zones. Uh, those 
many voices or frequently a cacophony of uh, different uh, views. Thank you, Ambassador Carson. Um, I think that we have time for one other question. Operator. Thank you. Our final question today will come from the line of Murrah Woods. And I'll oh, please go ahead. Um, thank you so much, um, Karen, your office, for, for making the company available. Um, I think the key question that's still on the table is around um, what, what many know of as, you know, 109, 456 of the Obama law, which um, essentially stated clearly that if a neighboring country was contributing to the violence uh, and atrocities in eastern Congo, with over 6 million people killed, that, that um, the U.S. would um, with, with, with stop um, those, all military assistance, right? And, um, and yet that, in addition to the Lakey Law, long time, long standing law, which prevents military assistance to those who are found um, culpable in atrocities, mass atrocities like this. Um, so I guess the question is really why um, the, the, there is a reluctance to, to fully implement U.S. law. Um, both the Obama law and the Lacey law, when it comes to Rwanda, given this really solid now um, mountain of evidence of Rwanda's uh, direct involvement in the atrocities in Eastern Congo. Johnny, since this is the last question, since we're a little bit short on time, I'd suggest in giving you the first chance to field this, but also if there was anything more that you wanted to add before we close, and then I'll ask the same of Earl, uh, Jeff, anyone else who wants to jump in with any final comments, and I'll do the same. Uh, Grant, thank you, and, 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 and Karen as well. Uh, I won't uh, attempt to answer the last question because it came through uh, as a garble here, and I'm not sure that I, I actually uh, heard it. But uh, for all those out there, I would say uh, that we have been uh, engaged uh, at a high level uh, on this issue. Uh, Secretary uh, Clinton, uh, Under Secretary for Political Affairs, uh, Wendy Sherman, uh, myself here in the department. Uh, I know that uh, Grant uh, has Deputy uh, National uh, Security uh, Advisor, uh, Dennis Mc, uh, McDonough, uh, and others. And the level and intensity of the discussions within the department uh, and in the interagency uh, have been very, very uh, intense uh, as we seek to find uh, uh, ways to uh, move uh, this process uh, forward. Uh, we have uh, over here in the State Department uh, not only traveled to the region, myself and Under Secretary Sherman, but uh, we have been working uh, the telephones uh, uh, constantly. Our ambassadors have been uh, active. Uh, and uh, we are uh, doing as much as we possibly can to keep uh, this uh, issue uh, on the uh, front uh, burner. Uh, and we are working uh, as a very strong and effective team in the U.S. government to push and advance uh, uh, our policies uh, in the uh, in the region. Uh, I'll stop there. We will continue to, to, to work uh, hard on this. Uh, as we pointed out yesterday, uh, we do support uh, the U.N. Secretary General appointing a high-level uh, uh, envoy. Uh, uh, we uh, are uh, committed uh, to uh, uh, bringing M23 leadership to justice. Uh, we're committed to um, uh, calling out those uh, who are in uh, violation uh, of uh, any of the uh, norms uh, of, uh, that we consider to be uh, contributing to the uh, the violence, and so we're 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 out there. But again, I won't try to answer the last question because I didn't didn't hear it. It was garbled. Thank you, Johnny Earl or Jeff. Did you want to add anything? Uh, no, Grant. Uh, let me just conclude, um, if, if I may, uh, by by saying that it is a very difficult environment. Uh, we greatly appreciate the interest of the advocacy groups as well as the humanitarian groups that are on the line, many of whom are our partners in trying to deliver assistance to, to the people of Eastern Congo. Uh, do know that we have put in some very uh, unique, flexible mechanisms to really help um, to 
to help address the needs of the displaced as well as the re-displaced persons. Uh, it's difficult for us. Uh, we have very limited access, and so we do rely on you and UN agencies uh, to help inform us better. We are doing um, a lot of contingency planning in the event the situation worsens, but we're, we're very hopeful that it will remain as it is, um, even even though it is still in a state of crisis. Thank you, Earl. Jeff, did you want to make any closing remarks? Uh, but Grant, all I would say is that um, I, I think here, here at the UN there's, there's also this sense that um, uh, uh, of this rethink that I, I mentioned earlier and, 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 the, and the need to try and, and uh, uh, take this tra tragedy and see if uh, uh, we can all um, figure out a way toward a more long-term, sort of sustainable uh, solution to this. Um, you know, this ongoing uh, challenge that um, all of us uh, uh, face. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. I think Johnny laid it out very clearly, and I, I think another example that he had given earlier that applies to this last question as well as the reason that we had canceled the foreign military financing for Rwanda by virtue of our statute and by virtue of what activities they've been engaged in in our assessment of that. And I think, as he said earlier today and, and as he said unequivocally yesterday when he was testifying that we've repeatedly pressed Rwanda to halt and prevent any and all forms of support to Congolese armed groups. But I think the key point also is that looking forward, as he said there too, our very clear expectation of all the parties, including Rwanda, is to cease support to M23 and any armed groups, abide by the Kampala Accords that were agreed to on November 21st and 24th, and to work constructively within the region and with the international community, including to take affirmative steps to end impunity for M23 commanders and others responsible for human rights abuses. And what we're driving at is what John has described earlier and, and in great detail uh, throughout and in what we have an administration-wide approach and effort underway is to, out of this crisis, see what opportunity exists to ensure that the underlying causes, economic, political, and otherwise, of the cyclical violence, particularly in eastern Congo, are addressed. And that's through the UN envoy, it's through the rethink of MINUSCO, it's through all the efforts that we've tried to describe on this call, but difficult to do justice in this amount of, of time. But that will be an ongoing area of focus at all levels of our government. I just wanted to add on a personal note, too, that I really appreciate everyone taking the time to speak with us. We've received, and I've personally received a lot of letters and emails and outreach on this. Those recommendations and those ideas are taken very seriously. They're important as we factor what we're doing in our policy, and we appreciate all of the efforts underway by those on the call to try to improve the situation on the ground and the ongoing work that you and your organizations do. So this is uh, not a one-off. It'll be part of ongoing outreach that we've had in the past and we plan to continue. So again, thank you. Karen, I turn it back over to you. Um, no, I just want to thank um, thank everyone for joining the call today. I wanted to thank our administration, uh, administration speakers for taking the time. Um, there was great interest in this call, and I apologize in advance. I apologize for not being able to get to every single question. Um, however, if you have additional follow-up questions, um, you know you can you can email international at who eop gov. Um, again, this is one of, of, of many calls that we are doing, so um, please stay tuned for additional calls on this, and we'll be sure to keep you updated. Again, thanks to everyone, thanks to our speakers, and I'll talk to all of you soon. Thank you. Voilà, vous venez là de sur euh, la, euh, la téléconférence qui a eu lieu euh, ce soir, donc ça a commencé à 17h juste heure de Washington. C'est une téléconférence que la Maison Blanche a organisée sur la situation en RDC. Et euh, cette conférence a été euh, organisée, comme j'ai dit, par la Maison Blanche. Elle a connu la participation de plusieurs officiels euh, de la Maison Blanche et aussi du département d'État. Nous pouvons citer euh, euh, Grand 
Harris, qui est euh, l'assistant spécial assistant au président, euh, au président Obama. Et puis, euh, il est aussi euh, senior director pour euh, les affaires africaines. Et il y a eu encore euh, euh, le secrétaire Johnny Carson, qui est euh, le sous-secrétaire euh, d'État et euh, chargé des affaires africaines au département d'État. Il y a eu aussi euh, Earl Gast, qui est euh, l'administrateur euh, de US, USAID et, euh, sur l'Afrique. Et aussi, il y a eu l'ambassadeur Geoffrey de, euh, de Laurentis, qui est avec euh, euh, la mission des Nations Unies euh, euh, pour... Euh, euh, pour euh, la RDC. Donc voilà, c'est une euh, conférence qui a duré 1h30, euh, si je me trompe. Alors, euh, elle a parcouru presque beaucoup, beaucoup de, de points. Il y a eu euh, les humanitaires qui ont, qui ont donné leur avis sur euh, la crise humanitaire à l'est de la République démocratique du Congo. Et il y a eu euh, le secrétaire Johnny Carson qui... Euh, euh, toujours à essayer de marteler par rapport à, à la situation euh, ou par rapport à la position maintenant du, du département d'État, disons du gouvernement Obama, l'administration Obama, par rapport à la crise en RDC. Mais en, en cela, quelques points qui, euh, euh, ceux qui ont suivi l'audition, les, les hearings au Congrès hier, n'ont pas appris grand chose aujourd'hui, mais quelques points essentiels. Euh, il a ajouté que euh, euh, ce qu'ils n'ont pas pu faire depuis euh, plusieurs années, c'est-à-dire qu'ils ont amené le conflit ou le problème de la RDC au même niveau d'intérêt que euh, 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 le problème qu'il y a maintenant en Somalie, au Mali et au Soudan. Donc c'est un effort par rapport à la question qui, qui, qui a été posée de voir Qu'est-ce que euh, le gouvernement euh, Obama a pu faire de différent par rapport à, à cette crise depuis beaucoup d'années Voilà donc euh, ce qu'il a dit. Et aussi, il y a une question qui a été posée sur euh, euh, la diaspora. Il a souligné qu'effectivement, la diaspora joue un rôle très important. Et comme hier, après euh, euh, les hearings du Congrès, il y a plusieurs membres de la diaspora qui l'ont interpellé et qu'il reçoit aussi beaucoup de lettres de la diaspora et de messages de la diaspora mais selon lui la diaspora est vraiment divisée et la diaspora est divisée puisqu'ils viennent avec de voix différentes hier seulement il a eu euh, des messages qui lui ont dit pourquoi il a condamné euh, le Rwanda il y a aussi des messages qui ont demandé qu'on qu puisse arrêter euh, Joseph Kabila. Il y a aussi des messages qui ont demandé qu'il n'a pas condamné euh, fermement le, le Rwanda. Il n'a pas fait euh, beaucoup pour euh, changer la position du euh, gouvernement Obama par rapport à la situation. Voilà ce qu'il dit, que la diaspora joue un rôle important, mais à son avis, il croit que la diaspora vient avec des messages euh, euh, différents, c'est-à-dire viennent avec des voix différentes. Voilà ce qu'il a dit par rapport à la diaspora, mais euh, à, à lui et au, au, à l'assistant euh, Gren Harris de signaler que ils ont reçu beaucoup, beaucoup de lettres et de, de, euh, de messages téléphoniques de la part euh, des Congolais à travers le monde et surtout de la diaspora aussi aux États-Unis. Euh, sur le sujet. Cela veut dire qu'il y a de plus en plus d'intéressement euh, par rapport à ce problème du Congo. Alors, ils n'ont pas pu prendre toutes les questions puisque nous on était en ligne, on demandait de, de, de pouvoir intervenir, ils n'ont pas pu prendre tout le monde, mais ils disent qu'il y a une adresse que nous allons aussi poster euh, euh, dans bacolostate.com il y a une adresse email où les gens peuvent continuer à envoyer le, le lettre, le message et surtout des suggestions. Voilà en bref euh, ce qu'on peut retenir euh, de, euh, 
de, ces, de cette conference call qui a eu aujourd'hui à la Maison Blanche. Donc pour vous dire qu'il euh, y a quand même une mutation par rapport à la position des États-Unis, ce n'est pas facile, euh, le statu quo est toujours là, mais à force de, 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 de forcer, euh, si je peux me permettre la tautologie, et il y a quand même des choses qui euh, commencent à bouger un peu. Donc, euh, ne baissez pas le bras. Continuons à, à pousser très fort. Et euh, je pense avec des multiplications, des réunions comme ça, des conference calls, des, euh, des rencontres avec des officiels américains, euh, des hearings au Congrès, et tout cela va aider un peu à à pouvoir changer la, la situation. Cette situation de guerre a beaucoup duré. Tout le monde en a marre. Et nous, Congolais, nous voulons que ça puisse prendre fin. Et euh, une fois pour toutes. Voilà ce que je peux dire aujourd'hui. Et euh, merci à tous, tout le monde qui a suivi euh, Bacolo State. Merci à ceux qui euh, vont nous prendre en cours. Et euh, on va essayer de poster... Euh, cet enregistrement de, de la conférence pour que les gens euh, sachent de quoi il s'agit. Merci. C'était Gary Wellepo, Bacolo State depuis Washington DC, la capitale du monde. Peace. Soit où ta base à Luanda, au centre d'Afrique à Abidjan, y'a un délivre qu'il parie ou même jamais là. C'est pour eux qu'on a dit qu'elle y a un papa.